Hi guys. Whew. Can you hear me okay? Can you can someone just let me know they can hear me because I'm here solo. So if you could let me know, that would be awesome in the chat. Thank you. I've got terrible light in here today. Like it's going from really sunny outside to really overcast. And it's because I sit in front of the window, it's just making the light go crazy. Can you hear me? I just want to make sure everyone can hear me before I keep going. Streaming, I must be slow because I can't see. Can you hear me? Okay, woohoo, you can hear me. Thanks, Liz. I got it. So I'll probably have to keep adjusting the um, light here as I go because it's terrible. But I've got my coffee and I'm ready. Okay, so I just want to say hi to everyone that's in here. Thank you for coming. Who have we got here? We've got Kelly was in first. I've got the sweat mopper. Hey, going. Um, I've got Ian here, the tap doctor. <laughs> well, it's a bit dark here today, Ian. It's like up and down with the light. So I don't know. I don't know if we've got some rain cloud coming, but there's a huge dark cloud like right in front of my window. Um, Gay's here. Hi, Gay. And Robin. Hi, Robin. Uh, Megan and Liz is here. Hey, Dwayne. Thanks for coming. Fat girl sewing. And Brad's here, or Brad and Jazz. Hey, Michael, nice to see you. And, yeah, so thank you, everyone, for coming. I think Andrew's here as well. He's just um, um, maybe not so hands-free, <laughs> but he has messaged me to say he's here. Hey, Robin. Hey, Star City Picker. And hey, Joanna. Okay, so I don't have Bron here today, my little partner in crime. She's possibly listening to me but she's probably got me on the TV so she can't chat. <laughs> so Bron um, currently has her four-year-old home who um, obviously needs her attention quite a lot, whereas my kids are a bit bigger and can self-isolate in their bedrooms. But um, Bron's got the little four-year-old, so um, he's quite busy, so it's a bit distracting for her to be live at the moment. And she's also having heaps of trouble with her laptop. It keeps cutting in and out. So she's on the hunt for a new um, laptop. So I don't have Brad he um, Bron here today, but if you are watching me on the telly, hey, Bron, I miss you. Okay, i got little bunny Fufu here and Beck King, Mel Starfish. Um, so hello, hello. And Harry, hey, Harry, how are you going? So while Bron isn't here today, I thought I would just kind of come in and do um, – a bit of a casual chat on my own and just thought maybe I would talk about some different ways that we can all make progress um, because we're all in a little bit of a different time, I guess, at the moment with our reselling or even if you don't resell. Um, I think life is changing for a lot of us. Reselling is changing for us. We don't really know what's in store for any of us. Um, how long things are going to take to get back to normal. So I just kind of thought maybe today I might just talk about um, different ways that we can progress and, and still be productive and still keep our motivation up and our um, inspiration up and different things like that because I know that I need that kind of stuff myself and, um, yeah, I just thought maybe it would be good to come in here and chat about um, – different ways. So, okay. So I did find a little um, thing on Instagram last night, which gave me the motivation for this chat. And it was a, um, a post that was all about 30 different ways to make progress. Um, and I just thought like I could relate it back to reselling, um, not just in, I, I mean, I think you can relate this to life in general, but I also think you can just relate this to um, your eBay and your reselling and, and whatever else is going in, in your life. So um, I guess the first thing that's on this little list of things to wait 30 ways, I will put this up on Instagram after the live as well because I thought it was pretty cool. But basically the first thing it says on this list on ways to make progress is to wake up early. So, um, yeah, I, I thought I might talk a little bit about this because it's something that I'm trying to 
make a point of doing myself at the moment. And I've been setting my alarm um, most of the time for 5 a.m. at the moment, which is crazy because I'm not a morning person at all. But um, and, and maybe the last week I haven't had it at five. I've had it at like six. <laughs> and, and most of the time I am waking up at that time. But some days I do sleep in if I've had a poor um, night's sleep. Hi, Gay. Hi, Jennifer. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of thought I think it really does make a difference if you wake up early. I don't know if people have ever heard about joining the 5 a.m. club. Like there's kind of like this 5 a.m. club where they reckon that really motivational people and, you know, people like Gary Vee and people like um, Tony Robbins and things like that, they all wake up before 5 a.m. and that's the time of the morning where they get most of their stuff done. So I've been setting my alarm for 5 a.m. and I've really noticed that it's made me a lot more productive. Um, it was really helping me before when the kids were at school because um, normally I would drop the, the kids to school at about 8.30. So by getting up at 5 a.m., it was actually giving me a couple more hours in the morning that I would normally be asleep for. Um, and I was getting my eBay stuff done. So if I wake up at 5 in the morning now, I'm basically making a coffee and um, I'm coming down and I'm sending out eBay offers or I'm doing some ending and relisting or if I've got some photos that have already been edited, I'm getting some new listings up. So it's amazing what, what you can get up. Like if you get up that couple of hours, if you're normally somebody who wakes up at seven o'clock in the morning and you start getting up at five, like that two hours is so much more productive because people aren't awake in the house and it's quiet and social media is quiet. So just everything in general feels less noisy. So I just feel like it's such a good time to have a clear, fresh mind and think about things and um yeah, oh, look, Dwayne is saying he's up at five every morning except for the weekends. Well, I think that's fair enough. If you're not if you're not working on a weekend, then I think it's good to have a little bit of sleep in. <laughs> Andrew, you're last, darling. You are last. <laughs> but I, I knew you were there, so that's okay. Um, But, yeah, I just feel like definitely I think that is the number one way to make progress is to get up early in the morning. <laughs> I am not productive at 5 a.m. I'll just sit there for hours. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. I think if you just get up and you go straight to your computer um, and you can knock off some of that stuff, then I think that's, um, I, know, I don't know, like I could easily sit in bed with a cup of coffee at 5 a.m. and scroll Facebook and scroll Instagram and all that kind of stuff. But I find that if I get up, make the coffee, come straight to the computer and just log into eBay straight away, start doing my listings, and I can put on some YouTube or I can put on a podcast or I can put on um, some music, whatever I'm, in, whatever I'm in the mood for really at the time. Um, oh, I think that's awesome. So and I'm really enjoying at the moment listening um, to more educational things on YouTube and I'm trying to self-teach myself more about YouTube. So I've been doing a lot of learning and oh, I just love listening to that kind of, I love finding like a, a show that goes for about an hour where I can learn something and I can be, you know, fiddling around with eBay in the morning but also learning at the same time. Um, <laughs> um, Gay is saying you're more productive in the first two hours. Yeah, I definitely agree. And coming from somebody who's not a morning person, I definitely feel way more productive um, at the moment if I can get myself up at five. Um, the only time I can't get up at five is if I've got broken sleep. And I'll talk about that a little bit later on with one of the other little um, tips, I guess. Okay, so number two on this list is saying um, another way to make progress every day is to read daily. So I don't, I love to read and I don't sit down and read books often enough and it's something that I have been thinking about a lot lately about getting back into some reading some books um gets you a little bit away from social media and um gets you to just tune out it's it's also relaxing and it's good for self-care um 
and and there's I guess there's two kinds of things that I like to read because I love to learn I love to self-teach myself so I love to learn about business books I love to read about um, self-help I love to read anything that's gonna um, t- like teach me something business finance money um, so much I, I, I love that kind of book and I also love to read romance novels so because I'm a bit of a tragic romantic so um, yeah I like to read a little a, rom- a romance novel um but I don't like to read a single book I I need to read a series I'm one of these people who's got an addictive personality and once I start something I don't want to stop so I'm not very good at reading like a single book I like to read a book that's part of a series so it's a bit like a tv show I don't watch a lot of like single movies I prefer to watch a series because I just like to keep it going so um yeah if you've got any romance um series that you like send them my way dm me because um yeah i'm probably due for for a new series or else i'm due to reread one which is probably true blood because i normally read that every 12 months i just something about those true blood novels they just are good (laughs) fairy when whispers hello um Lots of inspirational books out there and journaling is wonderful too. I'm not much of a journaler. I, I don't know. I, I've tried it a few times and it, I can't seem to get it to work for me. I do like to write down thoughts and I've got scrap pieces of paper everywhere with notes on them and I quite often find books where I started to write things and then I, I stop. Um, but... I think while I've been packing up the house, getting ready to move, I've been packing up all the books and it's like I keep finding all these books in my um, pile of books that are for sale and I go, oh, I'd like to read that. Or I've got a few set aside actually that I keep thinking I'm going to read that book until unless it sells in the meantime. But I'd really, yeah, I love love to read. So and I like to read an actual book, not listen to an audio book. I don't know. I guess when you read it yourself, you hear it in the tone that you you want to read it. So when you hear it in an audio book, you're stuck listening to that person's voice, which might not actually match the voice that you're giving the book. I don't know. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, I think definitely like you get the same knowledge from it. So if you enjoy listening to an audio book, then absolutely go for it. I, I, I can't listen to an audio book that's... Um, read by somebody else I don't mind it if it's read by the author but if it's if it's read by somebody else I'm not really keen for it but um podcasts are awesome for learning and I love listening to podcasts I go onto Spotify and I listen to podcasts or I google for spot podcasts and yeah I love all that kind of stuff it's very very good for you um I listen to audiobooks all the time cozy mysteries yeah isn't it funny what everyone likes um I'd recommend the True Blood series. As you know, I've read all the TV, all of the TV series. <laughs> I don't, you've read the TV series? I, I'm reading that wrong, Andrew. But True Blood books are awesome. I didn't actually like the TV series. It was too different from the book, so I stick with the books. Um, Bet King, if you need a new laptop, Bron, hit me up. I can organise you a discount. Oh, there you go, Bron. Beck, can you, I'm not sure if Bron's 100% here, but can you DM me so I can, um, on Instagram, and I'll send her those details because that would be awesome for her. Ken says he's tried reading It's Not For Me. He just waits for the movie. But the movies are so different. They're so different. Like, yeah, there's so much more detail in a book. It's awesome. But if you don't like reading, try and listen to some podcasts on like business and self-help and motivation and all that kind of stuff. They're, they're awesome. Um, I'm trying to read this chat. You know, I'm terrible at the chat, even on my own. That's exactly right, Cara. <laughs> That's what I want when I'm reading. <laughs> um, I used to read Granny's Meals and Boons when I was a teenager and all it did was <laughs> Well, I sometimes you have to live through these things, <laughs> Kelly. You have to live 
I like to live through music a lot of the time. <laughs> That's why I like my country music love songs. I, I live through those. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I get what you mean. <laughs> People are doing it, but it's for the young people. <laughs> we got to get Ian over to um, Instagram. We'll get him there. <laughs> yeah. Andrew doesn't really understand it, but he's still there, aren't you? You, you kind of get it. Um, Aussie Thrifter, I love reading horror and true crime. Everyone's, yeah, isn't it cool? I love what, it's such a good, um, it's just such a good way to relax and tune out. And I find once I start, I, sometimes I find it difficult to start a new book series because I'm busy or my mind's buzzing or whatever it is. But as soon as you get into that first book and you've got a series, oh, my God, you can't put them down. You just want to keep reading, reading every spare second. It's like I'll just read for 10 minutes more. I'll just read for 10 minutes more. So, yeah, I definitely need to get into that headspace again at the moment. Okay, so the third thing on this way to make progress list is to eat well. And um, I definitely think that's um, so important, like especially during times like this where we're isolated, people aren't getting outside to exercise as much. Um, and I just think during this time while everybody is self-isolated, mental health is going to end up like a massive, massive issue and I think there's going to be a lot of suicides after this I think um I know that sounds sad and terrible but I actually think that mental health is uh, around the world is going to really um struggle especially for those who are in a really depressive state and you know they're physically just it, all this anxiety and stress and and stuff so I definitely think that if we can all try and eat well and eat better during this time um and just in general as well it makes such a difference to how clear your mind is i know when i drink more water i feel so much um clearer and fresher and less foggy brained and i feel like i can think straight and i i know that but i still struggle to drink enough water every day like some days i get to the bedtime and i go oh my god i didn't even drink any any water all day i've just had coffee and coke you know <laughs> even beer i don't know like um, but yeah get on the um I, I mean i think i was only saying that even brawn yesterday i feel like at the moment i'm not eating enough salad because i don't want to go and buy fresh produce from the shops because i'm so worried that about everyone who's handled it or sneezed on it or coughed on it or, or whatever so i'm kind of only buying bananas and bagged up salad bagged lettuce because i just don't like the idea of going at even i know you can wash it but it, I, I just something in me at the moment so i feel like i'm not eating much fresh foods myself at the moment so i'm eating too many wraps with like ham and cheese which is so boring but that's what we've got here and i'm trying not to go to the shops but um yeah i don't know like i just think try and eat as well as you can um you know and you know healthy mind healthy spirit healthy just keeps you healthy in general and it keeps your energy levels up and when your energy levels are high you're going to have so much more um spunk or energy or whatever the word is you know to put into your business and to put into your into your everyday life hey krillin i just saw you here um i just had a nice berry seltzer well i don't know what a seltzer is i'm gonna think it's maybe a smoothie or a milkshake kind of thing um but yeah you're gonna have to send me a picture of your seltzer like your um sausage and um peppers thing that you sent me yesterday <laughs> send me a picture of a seltzer <laughs> they are fantasy but sometimes we need a bit of fantasy in our lives don't we um you should always wash your fruit and vegetables. Trust me, I worked in produce. Yeah, and I do um, definitely normally wash wash everything, but I think just at the moment I'm a little bit more paranoid and um, I don't know, I read that story about that lady who was in Woolworths and she she had the virus and she spat on the on the apples and it just made me feel sick. I was just like, oh, I just, I just can't go there. <laughs> can't go there. Oh, fizzy water. Okay, so it's like soft drink, is it? berry soft drink like mineral water maybe with a berry flavor hmm. okay 
Hey, bum crack. Hey, going. Thanks for popping in. And Denise, the dumpster driver, is here. Hello. Um, and anyone else I've missed along the way that might, the nurse flippers here. Um, Ken's here. Fairy Renwist is here. There's a few, few more have popped in. So thank you so much. Today, we're just kind of talking about ways to make progress and keep spirits high and, um, you know, ways to work things that we can incorporate into our business and stuff to, um, yeah, keep pushing forward in hard times, I guess. Okay, number four on this list is to love yourself. And, um, you know, I think we all need a bit, a bit more of this, don't we? <laughs> we all need to love ourselves a little bit more. We all have um, some form of self-confidence issues or... Um, Think, put ourselves down, I guess, in our inside our heads. Um, I know I do it. I know I question myself. I know I judge myself more than anyone else, probably. So, um, you know, definitely, definitely, definitely love yourself is a big um, part of making progress. You can't do, sometimes you have to. Oh, I don't, this is a, this is hard to talk about on my own talking. Like I, you've, I've got you in the chat, but it's actually super hard to have like a combo by myself. <laughs> but um, Andrew just <laughs> Andrew Andrew needs more self love. Um, <laughs> it, I, I should. What am I doing? <laughs> anyway that is a hard that is a hard thing to talk about on your own but we definitely all do need to love ourselves and um, that will help take care of ourselves and I think loving yourself comes back to self-care looking out for what we need um, ourselves, and um, being kind to ourselves. it's really sometimes it's hard to if you're down on yourself it's hard to be kind to yourself and um yeah, I think everybody needs to be a little bit kinder to themselves. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Practice makes perfect game. <laughs> it does. Whew, this is hard, this this YouTube stuff, you know, it, it's hard. <laughs> um number five on this list, I'm gonna move forward from that one because it's hard for me to talk about, is um to judge less. And you know, this is a hard thing, you know, like I think we all judge people at some stage. We've all been judged. Um, we judge ourselves, um, and it, it is hard and I think it does, um, when you judge less, you become more um, grateful. Um, there's more gratitude, I think, that... Uh, Hmm. This, these, these I've set myself up for trouble here. <laughs> these are hard. Um, yeah, I just, um, yeah, I think judge people less, judge others less. Sometimes you don't know what's going on in somebody else's life and um, it's easy to pass judgment on them and it's easy to make um, quick judgments without getting to know somebody. Um and yeah you just never know what's going on in somebody else's life so you know the more we can all remember that and 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 the more and the more we less we judge ourselves because you know life isn't always easy we often make mistakes we often um maybe do things or behave in ways that we don't feel proud of but you just kind of sometimes you just got to move forward and not let it get to you and um yeah I, I I don't know. That's a um, <laughs> thank you, Denise. <laughs> Hi, Andrew. Drew, I mean Drew, Drew, Andrew, Drew, Drew. Too many Andrews. Thrift flip and fire. Hello, I can see you in here. Thank you as well. Um, but yeah, okay. So let's go through where we're up to because that's five things that we've talked about so far on ways to make progress. One, wake up early. Two, read daily. Three, eat well. Four, love yourself, and five, judge less. So I think they're all really important um, reminders that of um, 
things that we can do and ways that we can make progress. <laughs> I can say that. Oh, we've got somebody here, the Grateful Queen. Hello. Thank you for popping in. Um, okay, so number six. Number six on this list is be yourself. So um, Bron and I obviously talked about this a couple of weeks ago. We did a whole post on being authentic and being authentic online. And, um, yeah, just it's definitely really important to be yourself. Realise that not everybody's going to like you. Um, people might come and go. Just definitely just be yourself and... I don't know. <laughs> Be yourself and um, those that like you will like you for who you are. And and that's that's really all it, all it matters. And Joanna's saying it's very true. We all need to understand that we're all going through, through something collectively, but everybody's circumstances is very different. Oh, that's so true, isn't it? You know, like here we are in the world, like we are worldwide united with an this virus and yet every single person is going through and suffering in a different way and we all have to deal with it in a different way and yeah it's just it's crazy it's crazy but it's times like this that are going to bring um people closer together um and and oh, I think there's even though there's so many negatives that are going to come out of this virus, I think we're also going to see some positives and um, I, I hope so anyway. I hope so. Um, there you go. Aussie Thrifter, love me or hate me, but you will never forget me. <laughs> so that's it. And Gay is saying she finds it too difficult to be anything but gay. <laughs> um Sweat mopper. I was a retail manager and I was used to people not liking me. Yeah, I think you um, you know, definitely in different jobs you're gonna get you're gonna get a hit up, aren't you, with you know, different ways. And and it's the same with being here, putting yourself out here on YouTube. Um, it's intimidating, it is scary. I feel sick, literally sick before every single live that I come on on. I sometimes am sick after a live finishes. <laughs> I get nervous. I get so nervous and it's just um, I have to remind myself that any that those who want to be here will be here because they want to be here and those who want to watch back afterwards um, are here because they want to watch back or that they find value in things that I talk about or, or anything like that. But, um, yeah, be yourself and, and hopefully um, you attract you attract all the all the people that you want to attract. Um, Dwayne is saying, "Be the best damn you you can be, because no one else is you." And that's right. We're all different. We've all got something else to all got something to offer, and we've all got something to bring to the table, and um, we've all got something to learn from each other and to share. So, um, I love the YouTube community, though, back from burnout. Yeah, uh, the YouTube community is amazing. I've met so many awesome people on in this community. I've made some friends who I dearly hope are for life. And, um, ah, like, uh, it's just amazing. Like, talking to people on the phone, like, from all over the world is just something that I would just not – a year ago, if you'd said to me, oh, you're going to be talking on the phone almost daily to people in the UK or people in the US or, you know, messaging all these new people and making, ah, oh, it's just amazing. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Very, very happy. Hi, Aidy. Oh, I always say this wrong. Every time I go into a chat and I hear somebody else say your name, I'm not sure if it's Aid or AD or A. I, I, <laughs> I don't know, maybe you need to pronounce it out for me in the chat because I know I probably say say it wrong, but um, aid. I would say aid if that's the right way, aid. <laughs> Thank you, Fairy Wren Whispers. I appreciate that. I have regular live show on Friday and I'll make a video about my free bags, okay? I don't know what the free bags is. I must have missed that, but I will have a look. 
We're all friends here, Mill. <laughs> You're such a liar. You're such a liar, Andrew. He was not forced here. He was reminded to come in here. He wasn't forced here. <laughs> Hi, Gimbal. How are you going? Okay, 80. It said like 80. 8 I. I still can't work that out. <laughs> Next time I talk to Andrew on the phone, I'll get him to um I'll get him to pronounce it for me. <laughs> Hi Susie, how are you going? Okay, so um yeah, the next thing on this list that I wanted to talk about is um, setting goals. Okay, so that's another way to make progress. We can set goals. Um, I think it's so important to set daily goals, um, weekly goals, yearly goals, monthly goals, whatever it wants to be. Um, hit, make lots of goals and um, rev don't just make goals and then not follow through with them because that's the worst thing you, you can do. You have to make your goals and you have to actually um, sit down regularly and revise them, especially if you've got long-term goals, like three months, six months, whatever it is. Um, make sure you revise those goals and make sure they're still current because your circumstances can change. Everything can change so quickly, like from week to week or month to month. So if we're talking about business goals, definitely revise them you know, every few months and personal goals as well. Make sure you revise them because sometimes you can set yourself goals um, or intentions and then if you don't get through and you don't follow through with those kind of things, you actually, they make, that actually makes you feel worse. You feel really bad about yourself and, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like I, I definitely think goals, um, oh, here comes the sun again, look. I definitely think goals um, are so important to making progress. I don't think you can be su truly successful if you don't um, set goals and make goals and um, regularly do goals. You know, get out there, be a goal setter and write those goals down. I think you've definitely got to write them down. Oh, my God, this light. <laughs> it's crazy, crazy, crazy. Hey, PVP. Hey, going. Um We've got somebody else in here, Money Business Reselling. I haven't seen you before. Thank you for coming in. Um, oh, where are we? Okay, so we've done goals. Remember your goals. Oh, that's light. It's going to be super bright. Okay, the next thing on this list is to plan your day. I definitely think um, this is important and I probably don't do it enough myself. I know, I know Bron is so good at this. She's got like a weekly planner. She sits down, she plans out every single thing for the day so she kind of knows where she's going to do do stuff and, and I'm not so good with that. I'm a bit of a scatterbrain and like to kind of go with the flow um, and I do find that I can some days be less productive. So I definitely think if you've kind of planned out your day, have a to-do list um, and you can knock off those most important things off that to-do list first then um your day is definitely gonna um be more productive um i do i do know that a, that a lot of people actually make like their to do their to-do list for the next day the night before and I, I think that would be quite a good good way to do it you, you, just at the end of your day you sit down and you write down exactly what you want to achieve for the for the next day um I think sometimes it's good to have a master to-do list and then you need to break that master to-do list down into smaller chunks so that it's achievable and manageable and, you, and you're going to be able to get all that stuff done. So, um, yeah, plan your day out. Um, you know, that can, that can literally take five minutes. If you spend five minutes planning out your day, um, it's going to make a huge difference to um, – you know, what you get done in that day. And if you also, I don't know if anyone's ever read the book called Eat the Frog. Um, I just packed it up actually. It's in my personal collection, but um, it's such a good, it's such a good book and it's such a good um, method that, you know, like that the first few things of the day should be the hardest tasks. And if you've got like a really hard task, break it into smaller chunks so that don't just say, oh, today I've got to do my tax 
sit there and break that into really small chunks so then you've got one part of doing the tax done and then you work on the next part and you you, you snowball it I guess um just like you would snowball some debt as Dave Ramsey say but um snowball your to-do list and break the bigger tasks into smaller tasks and um you know it'll just yeah it'll help so much it'll help so much um thank you ashley i'm i'm going off this list of, of tips but um <laughs> i i thought it was a good list of tips so you know i will share this list after on instagram as well um grateful queen i love lists i have a daily list and a master list as well yeah i definitely think you know because if you just have one massive to-do list it's quite overwhelming to look at that and think oh do i have to do that all in one day but um no, you don't. Like break those lists down because there's only so much we can all fit into one day. So make it achievable because nobody wants to – sometimes you need to fail to learn, but on a daily basis with daily chores and tasks, we need to set ourselves up, um, you know, to achieve things um, and not not to fail. I think it's good to fail in terms of learning new things and um, stuff like that, but on our daily to-do stuff – we need to make progress. So, yeah, let's – lists. Um, Commonwealth Picker is here. Hello. Thank you for coming. Um, where are we? Oh, Mr. Buys a lot's here. Hello. Thank you. Um, I don't know if there's anyone I've missed, but if I have, hello. Okay, next thing on this list says to have a positive attitude. And um, – I think in times like this now, that's definitely definitely a positive attitude is going to help. And I know it can be positive. I know it can be hard to be sometimes positive in um, crappy situations, I guess. But um, I think keeping a positive mind will keep your spirits up and will keep your spirits lift, lift, lifted. Um, and it's just... I mean, it's it's good for your mind, isn't it? Like, especially like we are going to see rates of depression um, increase. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I as somebody who suffers mental health myself, like it is important for me to try and stay positive. I I, I can feel when I go into those slumps where I start to get negative or think negative or talk negative and. Um, it's all about just recognizing it, and when you when you sense it in yourself, bringing yourself back and going, okay, let's let's scrap that negative negative talk and um, be a bit more positive and, and 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 yeah, your your own mind is your biggest um, what's the word critic or um, uh, that's not the word. Y your own mind is is the hardest thing you'll ever have to juggle. So if you can try and keep positive thoughts and positive thinking, um, I know it doesn't fix everything, but it can certainly help with your own mental health and your own mental well-being. Um, PVP, you got to be positive. Laughing keeps me going. It's a survival mechanism. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes if you're in a really big slump, even just putting on like a funny movie, you know, like Adam Sandler or somebody who just makes you laugh for dumb reasons, just dumb things, it just can, oh, this light. Yeah, I think just sometimes like that, it just do, if, you, if, you, if you're having trouble working through positive thoughts in your own mind, Stick on a funny movie. Stick on something that's going to make you laugh and, you know, it will brighten your day and um, it will help. It will help, especially in isolation. You know, we can get negative here like, oh, we, we can't go outside. We, we can't go to the shops. We can't do this. We can't do that. We can't go to the gym. We can't see our friends. We can't see our family. Um, but, you know, like we can still laugh even if we're solo and, you know, that could be with just um, – yeah, a simple, a simple movie. Music is a big part of my mental health. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I've talked about this with you, Ian, as well. Um, and oh, music is massive. Music is life, isn't it? Like music can change your mood. But if you're in a really depressive kind of state of mind and you listen to really depressive music, that's not good. You need to pick up the tone a little bit. But um 
yeah, I just love, I've got a few different playlists, you know, I've, I've got, you know, playlists for my cleaning, which helps get me going. I've got playlists for, you know, like that are more relaxing and calming. And I've got um, playlists that are all about love songs. I've got playlists that are all about um, party mode or um, sitting around a campfire or whatever it is, different playlists for different moods. And um, music, yeah, music is life. I Music, it's always going. Like I have it on my, I've got it, Spotify is just open 24-7. Like it's on my phone, it's on my computer. I listen to it all the time. Hey, Jazz, how are you going? Um, Ken's saying he fires up some Gary V. <laughs> some people don't love Gary V. I obviously do like Gary V. I've got a couple of saved um, videos of his that really fire me up. I've got one that goes for about 10, 15 minutes. Ken, I'll send it to you if you hit me up with the DM. It's my favourite one and it was a recap that somebody made of him from a whole, for one of his years, a couple of years ago. Oh, I just love it. It's like 10, 15 minutes. If I need a real kick up the butt, I, I, I definitely stick that one on. Laughter is the best medicine. It truly is, Dwayne. Um, and, um, oh, who's saying Waterboy? I just saw that somewhere and now I can't see it. Adam Sandler. Okay, he's saying Adam Sandler would not make him laugh. I, uh, see, I'm one of these people who... who I sometimes doesn't understand comedy. <laughs> I know that sounds dumb, but I'm not like you, I'm not one of these people who can go to like a comedy club and I don't understand it quick. Like it takes me too long to sometimes understand the joke. <laughs> I'm 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 not very good with that kind of things. Like I'll get the joke like way after everyone else gets the joke, and I sit there like I have to work through it in my head. But Adam Sandler, he just makes me laugh and laugh. I love his movies. He is right up my alley I don't like Jim Carrey he's down my alley <laughs> I do like Jim Carrey's philosophies in life and um all that kind of stuff I just don't like him his movies <laughs> um somebody I did see somebody said water boy oh there it is the water boy it's the only okay so my favorite oh look at this light seriously okay where are we my favourite movie of Adam Sandler is Blended. I just love it. I watch it over and over. They took it off Netflix. So, Ken Skeets, if you've got Blended in your DVD collection, can you send me the link and I will buy it. <laughs> it's my favourite. I find depressive or emotional music, cath cathart, cath I can't even say that with love, but you know what I mean. It can be a dampener. A damper, yes. Sometimes it can if you're in that mood, but sometimes it can also really help you through those times and to know there's other people in within the music that's feeling the same way as you. Um, so, I, yeah, but sometimes, yeah, I think sometimes you need to change the mood of a music if it's, if it's getting you a little bit too down. Um, okay. Ah, look. Hey. Hey, Hey, going Rod, thanks for popping in. I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Um, number 10. Oh, my God, there's 30 things on this list and I'm only up to number 10. Okay. Number 10, let's go quicker. Number 10 is to have purpose. Okay, so um, 30 ways to make progress in your life, in your business. Um, number 10 says have purpose. So I definitely think that's so important. That comes a lot back to your why, doesn't it? You know, what is your why for doing things? What is your why for reselling? What is your why for for, for any business, anything in life? What is your why? Um, that is your purpose. And, yeah, wow, that's just so um, – that's just like a topic on itself, but isn't it? Oh, sorry. I seriously, I can't get this light. It's driving me crazy. I can't wait till I've got a new office. Um yeah, definitely, um, I, yeah, there's so much to talk about a why. Obviously, I've kind of put my why out there online, why I've done, why I got into reselling, why I do this, why I do YouTube. Um, yeah, I love hearing about everybody's why in life and why they, what their purpose is. What's your purpose in life? So, yeah. Um, 
if you haven't sat down and thought about that, I really encourage you to do that. Sit down and work out what your um, purpose is in life and what your own why is. You know, write it down. Um, write, look for some help and write that down. <laughs> My why is to meet women. Oh, my God, Andrew. <laughs> um, uh, you can't even, I will remind you of the first nine in a little while. <laughs> um, okay, okay. Okay, so that's it. The next thing is to find inspiration. Okay, this is massive, isn't it? Like it's so important to find some kind of inspiration that inspires you um every single day like what inspires you who inspires you um who can you gain inspiration from um ah oh, there's you know this uh, that is super important and you know i've got a few resellers that i find super inspiring to watch doesn't necessarily mean they're always like the biggest resellers um but uh, like I've definitely got a handful of um, resellers that inspire me and feel like, um, yeah, they drive me. But even in just in general life, like somebody who inspires you to do better each day, somebody, you know, find that inspiration for doing new things that wants to make inspiration to make you more creative Um Oh, there's just so much. That's such a <laughs> it's Mel's hitting with some of the most profound, useful lives. So I better get a Red Bull. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ashley. That's it. That's that means a lot. I was a little I was a bit stressed about going live today thinking well, what am I going to talk about by myself? This is this is awkward, but so thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I did put quite a lot of time into trying to think of something. Um, so yeah, thank you. And there you go. I worked out a long time ago. My purpose in life is to make people laugh and be their rock. Oh, that's awesome. Like, so I, I've, my brother is my rock. He is, um, uh, like he's two years younger than me and he's just, I don't know. He's just, he's like my personal shrink. <laughs> he's, um, he's just, yeah, we've all, my mum is also my rock. She's just amazing. And, um, yeah, it's, it's so good to have somebody, you know, I've got I've got different people. I've got friends who are my rock. I've got family who's my rock. I've, yeah, it's so, you, that's an awesome quality trait. I, yeah, if you are there for people and you, yeah, that's an awesome purpose in life. I, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> um so yeah okay number 12 on this list of ways to make progress is to help others and um yeah isn't that helping others like how good is helping others it may one it makes you feel good if you can help somebody else and if you can just help somebody else from the bottom of your heart i i just think that's awesome um and and helping others without expecting anything in return um is awesome um yeah i don't know like i i yeah and 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 you know what if you help others you end up helping yourself you actually end up i, I don't know if you by going in I, it's such a good feeling if you feel like you've helped somebody when i get a dm that says thank you you know for what you've taught like that's really valuable or you've helped me learn this or you've you've helped me grow my business or you've you've helped me want to learn something new or whatever it is like I just I don't know <laughs> I, I, that's awesome I think that's an awesome way to make progress progress help others um and also accept help for yourself from other people like that's how we all learn by asking for help so not only help others but ask for help if you need help on something. Nothing, no question is a dumb question. If you need to, if you need help on something, then then just reach out and ask. There's people who are out there willing to help you. Um, <laughs> um, gosh, where are we? <laughs> 
Okay, the next one is to network. Okay, networking. Like networking can be so good for business, but it can also be so good for your personal life. You can make so many new friends from networking and networking in business can open up so many um, new opportunities and um, oh, like it's meeting new people and like networking's awesome. Like and networking, this is networking, isn't it? Like we're all meeting new people. Um, when we all meet new people online, we're we're networking our business. We all help each other grow our business. We share each other's YouTube channels. We share each other's business. Um, by networking, you can um, you can make so many like. Uh, even when I went to Queensland recently and, um, you know, Bron and I um, were networking, I guess, with one of the one of the managers of one of the local thrift shops up there. And, you know, Bron had never, she goes into this shop every week and she'd never spoken to that manager. And um, I was in there just buying so much stock that I was talking to the manager because she was bringing me a trolley. <laughs> and I, that me talking to that manager made such a good connection for Bron. Now I, I wish she was my manager, but she's not. She's Bron's. But it's that that manager from that thrift shop text messages Bron every week now. Hey, I've got some new stock. Hey, do you want to come in to the back room and choose the stock before I put it out? Bron has made the best contact because we networked with that with that lady. So yeah, don't be afraid to network. Not only does it make awesome business connections but it's also going to make you um it's going to help your business grow and it's going to help you grow on a personal basis as well and you're going to make so you're going to make new friends and i just think that's making new friends is it's so awesome and yeah look Dwayne's saying networking is sharing knowledge it's very important so so such a good thing so yep networking okay Networking is hard when you're an introvert. Yes, and I'm actually, I'm, I would actually, I'm not an extrovert, but I'm not probably an introvert either. And probably, if, if you get me on the beers, then I'm probably definitely an extrovert. <laughs> but um, like on a general basis, like I actually struggle to go out there and network. Um, sometimes myself, but I can see the benefits of it, and I know that. It's something that I sometimes say to my kids, nobody knows that you're nervous to do something except you. So on the, on the outside, you can be so nervous to walk up to someone and try and network and make that connection and you can physically feel sick, but nobody else actually, that person that you're trying to network, if, if you just can come across confident, then they have no clue how nervous or sick you might be inside. Like you guys might not have any clue how sick I feel before I go to a live every week. Um, so so networking, I, I do get that it can be hard if you're an introvert. I do, I do get that because I do have that introvert side of myself um, and I do find things hard. But um, I just encourage you to try. Try and make those new contacts. Try and reach out and make new friends. DM some people on Instagram and, and make yourself a little tribe and make some friends and those messages will turn into phone calls. I had a nearly an hour and a half phone call the other day with one of the UK guys and um, I went out for a walk and we just chatted and, like, that's awesome, you know. So you, you can make new friends by um, – and look at me with Dwayne. Like, Dwayne's in the chat here. Um the other week I'd been text messaging him and then I put the phone in my pocket and I accidentally bum dialed him and <laughs> Dwayne and I ended up having like a 40 minute conversation like like a FaceTime you know like so that's how you make your connections you and and you know I didn't set out and plan to ring Dwayne <laughs> and he didn't expect a phone call from me and you know it's it's made it's built our um, friendship closer and it's, you know, that's that's awesome. So, yeah, there's Dwayne, Mothership Products. <laughs> it's getting my bum calls. 
Um, I like to describe myself as an extroverted introvert. I've taught myself to be extroverted. Yeah, Megan, look at this light. I am similar. I think I'm, I would call myself similar. Like I'm, as a kid, I was very introverted, very shy. Um, even as a teenager, I was very shy. It probably wasn't till my early 20s that I gained confidence. Um, and I think the older I've got, the more confidence I have grown within myself. Um, I think once you hit over 40, you give less fucks, basically. <laughs> you, you know, you just don't, you don't care as much. And I think it can be a, become a little bit easier. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm to call me. Okay. <laughs> Um, Ken is saying he's met more new people on YouTube in the last six months than he has in real life in the past six years. And isn't that awesome? Like, because I, I know sometimes my family thinks it's odd, like you've got all these online friends. Like how are they real friends or whatever? But you do build real connections with people that you actually set out and make the time to make friendships with like just because it's online doesn't mean you can't build a really true friendship um with that hey Cajun reseller um that is exactly right gimbal I am with you um 30s were still hard for me 40s I am much more comfortable within myself and um definitely <laughs> okay you're joking there but <laughs> um yep um youtube someone was he saying youtube is about the only way to meet folks now introverts paradise i have noticed that there's a lot of introverts on youtube and i think it really does help them to come out of their shell and um <laughs> need to super chat me but thank you I appreciate it and yes you can have a phone call <laughs> even if it's not like a bum chat <laughs> um YouTube community has exploded I think it has and you know I think it's only going to explode more while we're all locked indoors because it's such a great way to spend our time and talk to people I think it's awesome Cara is saying online friends are real do you know what I 100% agree I made my first lot of um, online friends 11, 12 years ago when I was trying to, thinking about falling pregnant with my youngest daughter, who's now 10. And um, at the time, I was part of a group of women that all wanted, I know this is, please don't judge me on this, <laughs> but we were, I was in a gender swaying group. We all wanted a specific gender of baby. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I already had a girl and two boys and I wanted to have the fourth baby as another girl so that um, I had the two of each. I wanted two of each. I mean, at the end of the day, I didn't really care and I had both genders. It wasn't wasn't anything like that. I just really thought it would be good to have two of each and they, they all have a sister and they all have a brother. So I joined this online baby forum. I can't even remember what it was called and found this group of women that were all doing a similar thing. Um and we connected and we made friends. And I am still friends with those girls online now. I have met some of them in real life and um, we have I've been to concerts with some of them. And um yeah, 12 years we've been friends. And um, you know, some of those women know more about my life than some of the people who are in my real life. So it's definitely, I would definitely agree with Kara. Online friends are definitely real friends. And, look, I met Bron online and, um, you know, we hit it off straight away and, you know, yeah, definitely. Hey, Z, I can see you there. Hey, going. Um, okay, I'm, we're, I've lost track here. Okay. Number 14 ways to make – number 14 in the ways to make progress is to save money. Um uh, yes, obviously in life we can make progress with saved money. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I reckon I'm saving money during this virus. I'm not going to the shops. I'm not spending as much. Uh, I'm not going up to the local supermarket every day to buy a handful of things. Um, so I'm probably saving some money there. But, um, you know, 
I, I'm not really one to talk about money. I haven't been great with money in my life, um, but I definitely do agree that saving money will make progress in your life. <laughs> okay, the next one on this list was automate. Okay, the more we can automate things, oh my goodness, this light. <sighs> The more we can automate things in our life, the easier it's going to become for us, whether or not that's business, um, you know, just that goes back to systems, doesn't it? The more systems we have in our life, the more, um, oh, like the more we can automate our life and the more we can get things into a routine and that system, the easier life is. And, um, yeah, I definitely... Oh, systems are, I mean, I, I worked 10 years at McDonald's. It was all about systems. Like if you, if you think about it, think about how these big businesses, like how does McDonald's run worldwide and it's the same everywhere you go. Like you could walk into a McDonald's here and go to work or well, I could go to America and probably work in McDonald's and beside from some different things on the menu, it's all going to be the same. Like, Automate your business, automate things in your life that can be automated and you will um, make so much more progress in your in how much you get done in a day, um, how productive you are. Um, yeah, like I just, yeah, automation. If you can automate things, life will just, um, oh, tenfolds easier. <laughs> There you go. Thanks, Dwayne. <laughs> the processes you put in place, the more efficient life becomes. Yes, absolutely. And the more your business will flow, the more your life will flow, the more you get up and you have your routine and, um, you know, systems, processes, life is all about those. So, yes, the more you can automate, the better. And the next thing on this list, which is like that, is to delegate. So, again, I learned how to delegate so much when I worked at McDonald's. Um, you know, as a manager, that's what I had to do. I had to delegate all the jobs. I had to go from doing all the jobs myself to all of a sudden I had to be the one to delegate all those jobs. And I don't know about you, but delegation is really, really hard for some people. And there's certain jobs in life where we all feel like nobody else can do them as good as us or yourself. And they're really hard to let go and they're really hard to um, delegate and pass on to somebody else. So, um, yeah, I just, ah, I don't know. Delegating is a tricky one because we all know that we need to delegate. You know, we can't do everything ourselves. We can't wear all the hats ourselves. Um, it's really hard if you are a one-man band trying to, like I know in my eBay business, I'm a one-man band. I have to do everything. I have to source. I have to ship. I have to pack. I have to photograph. I have to list. Um, holy moly, the job never ends and there's so much other stuff that you need that you'd like to learn and there's more platforms that you'd like to get onto but there comes a point where you cannot physically do it all and you have to outsource so i guess the first thing that i outsourced was the house cleaning and um i've had a house cleaner for a few months now it's been an absolute savior and i'm hoping that i can continue with the house cleaner when i'm moving to my new house um I do have a large rent increase going forward into my new house. So I need to, money-wise, I need to make sure that I can afford it, especially while sales are a bit, oh, this light, sales are a bit down for me. So, um, yeah, delegate what you can. The next thing that I would like to delegate is some photography in my business. Um but, yeah, I think delegating anything in your life. I mean, house cleaning can come back to your personal life, can't it? Delegate the jobs that you don't like doing. I hate cleaning a bathroom, let alone two bathrooms, two showers. I can't stand it. Um, I hate cleaning the oven. Like, I've just organised the cleaner to do my oven, you know, on Monday. Um, just delegate things that you don't like that bring you the least amount of joy and... Um, Sometimes they won't be done the same 
way that you do them or maybe they won't be done as good as you can do them yourself um, or maybe they won't be done as fast as you can do them but sometimes you have to let go you really have to um, pass the reins over to someone else and um, let them do jobs to help you whether even if it's in your even if it's in your family life you know like I might clean the house and I do it to my standard and then somebody else, my husband might try and clean the house or the cleaner might clean the house and it might not be the same as I would clean it. But sometimes you just got to let that stuff go. Like you can't, nothing has to be perfect. You just have to um, get it done. Just it's, it's, We need to stop trying to worry about making things perfect. At the end of the day, um, if, if I was taking the photos for my eBay business and someone else was taking the photos for my eBay business, most of the time the only person who's going to know the difference is me. The buyer is not going to know the difference in reality. Like they're not going to see the little tiny perfectional things that I might do to make it better than someone else. So delegate, delegate, delegate. Um, <laughs> There you go. Ashley, see, she loves to clean. It relaxes. See, it stresses me. <laughs> I do not like it at all. I do not like it at all. Um, I am procrastinating perfectionist. I never get things done, but I struggle to delegate as well. Yeah, it's really, really hard. That is a massive problem, um, Dwayne. I think that a lot of us are like that. We, we do procrastinate and we do like it to be perfect. And I have said it before um, on my channel, but my favorite Gary V quote is people are so worried about making shit perfect instead of just getting shit done. And I just think that is like such a wake up quote. Like it's so true. We just focus on making it perfect instead of just getting it done. And if we just got it done, we'd get so much more done in a day than trying to make things perfect. Just just get it done. <laughs> yep. Um, since I live alone, delegating is not on my to-do list. But you can still delegate things. You can still delegate business things or um, even living alone. I think you can delegate. You can delegate jobs that you, you might delegate your garden to be mowed, your grass to be mowed or your hedges to be cut because you don't like to garden or, you know, there's different things that we can all delegate in our life to make our life simpler and more enjoyable. Um, I procrastinate about procrastinating. <laughs> yes, procrastinating is just struggle, isn't it? Um, Andrew, I've literally never worried about getting anything perfect or getting anything done. <laughs> you underestimate yourself, Andrew. Um, yes. Okay, where are we? Okay, let's move on. I can't see. Okay, do you want me to keep going with this list? I'm only up to like 16. Like I could almost do the other 16 in a whole nother chat. <laughs> do you want me to keep going? Like what, we've got like 50 here. Do you want me to keep talking or? <laughs> let's get to 20 anyway. We'll get to 20, then we'll see. Okay, 17 says to track your finances to make progress. Um, yeah, that goes back a little bit before to the one that said to save money, doesn't it? But, yeah, track your finances, know where your money's going, know where you're spending your money, know where you're spending your business funds. Um, I'm just going to have a drink. Um, definitely. Definitely. Um, Track your finances. Keep track of your business expenses. No, I know I'm behind at the moment on my business expenses. Um, too much going on here lately and I haven't kept um, enough on it. I haven't focused enough on my business the last couple months in growing it and stuff. So all those kind of things have slid. And um, I definitely know that once I move house, um, I need to get back into that real mojo, track my finances, um do do everything there okay keep going keep going okay i'll keep going for a bit but if you get bored tell me <laughs> it's really weird to talk for an hour by yourself um okay so track finances i'm not going to talk too much about finances i'm not an accountant i'm not great with my own finances <laughs> i am certainly not one to teach on finances but um i definitely think that um it's important to track your finances in business and in personal life. Goodbye, Andrew. 
Thank you so much, Andrew, for coming in. I will message you later, um, DM you, and um, we've got a phone call this week coming. And Ashley's also bid, so thank you for coming, Ashley. <laughs> I know it's late over there in the UK, so thank you. Um, <laughs> don't stop, keep going, I won't get bored, okay. <laughs> The next thing on this list is to, um, yep, get shit done. Yep, stop trying to make it perfect. Just get shit done. Absolutely. The next thing is to build a brand. Okay, so I guess this is, this is we're talking about progress with your business, I guess, is to build a brand. And I, I think building a brand will really help your business grow. Um and that will come back to your why, build your brand around your why and your um, your purpose. You know, what is your purpose? What is your why? And then build your brand around that. So even like if I'm thinking about myself with my own personal branding, okay, so back from burnout, and people sometimes say to me, where did back from burnout come when you're a reselling channel? And it's just hard because my channel, I didn't start off as a reseller, you know, back from burnout came from my Instagram page when I was burnt out and in a really rough spot and going through a rough time. And I set up Instagram um, to keep me motivated, to keep me positive. And it was my little back from, to come back from burnout. It was to help me. And I during that time, I fell into the reselling community, started reselling, and my page is obviously about reselling now, but it still also comes back to my why and my purpose. And, um, you know, I still struggle with burnout. I still struggle with um, mental, mental health and different things like that. And I think back from burnout is still relevant to me, it would be hard for me to change my name now because I have built my brand around Back From Burnout, so my personal brand, I feel. So I am, that's my personal brand. But, um, yeah, I think everybody needs to build their own brand and to you need to build your brand around your purpose and your why and then I think your brand will just come out and it will just kind of shine through and, um, I think everybody's got their own personal personal brand to share and to give and, um, yeah, that's that. <laughs> um, if you got in, uh, where are we? The next thing says fail fast. Okay, so this, this, is, this is important to progress, I think. I think we do need to fail to progress. We need to fail to learn mistakes. We need to fail to learn um, how to do things differently the next time around. And, um, yeah, we need to make mistakes in life, whether or not that's personal or, um, um, you know, business, whatever. Like life is about not meant to be perfect. Life is about making mistakes. And, um, I, yeah, I just... I, I am a firm believer of failing fast. I have done businesses before this that haven't gone great. Um, you know, would I say I failed? Not sure. Maybe I, maybe they did fail because they certainly didn't make me any money. <laughs> but um, uh, they failed in some ways, but I learned so much from those businesses in other ways. So those failings taught me things for each business that I've had afterwards so every business everything that I've learned up till now is helping me in my reselling business and will help me go forward even on YouTube because I've just learned so much about other stuff um, from I guess failing at other businesses and you know it's not a bad um, failure is not a bad thing we should all embrace failure we shouldn't be a we shouldn't be afraid to fail and we shouldn't be afraid to fail in front of other people. I'm not afraid to fail in front of you guys. If if I fail at something, I'm happy to admit that mistake, admit that failure, that didn't work for me, move on, try something else. So um, we all need to put that into um, 
at, you know, don't be afraid to fail at something. If you want to try something new in your reselling business, have just have a go. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, you know, like, but if you don't try, you absolutely never know. So it's so important to not be afraid to fail, not be scared of doing things to look dumb like oh I don't want to uh, what if I do that and I, I fail I'm going to look dumb in front of all these people that are watching well, that comes back to um judging yourself less and all that kind of stuff that we talked about earlier like just have a go like don't be afraid to fail um um what are we doing what are we doing <laughs> You learn re-commerce, Dave. Hello, welcome. Um, I'm not sure if I saw you in here earlier. But, yes, you learn from failure. You certainly do. You, you. I don't believe that you can truly grow unless you've failed and you've learned from those, those mistakes because learning from your mistakes will make you better the next time around. And, um, yeah. And PVB is saying fear of failure holds a lot of people back from trying absolutely this is fear is like massive isn't it like we are so fearful of and and that comes back to things we talked about earlier being judged um or you know judging ourselves. we fear is massive we fear is and fear is real we are all got fear um and just but don't be afraid don't be afraid of trying don't be afraid of failing um you will just grow so much more and you will learn so much more and you'll be thankful you'll be thankful in the end for those experiences so yeah definitely um clay's here hi clay a great book that i've read for parts of over and over is called the power of now oh yes i've read that book too i've got that in my own personal collection the power of now that is a powerful book um i have to be in the right headspace it's not an easy read i have to be in the right headspace to read that book um because you do it really does make you think but um different parts of it, i agree little parts of it over and over and um yeah so anyway i think that's a good one don't be afraid to fail and number 20 is um Oh, hold on. I'll just see that comment. I'm afraid of failing at reselling and also afraid just as much of being super successful as I don't always feel successful. Um, okay. I'm afraid of failing at reselling and also afraid just as much or more of being super successful. It's hard, Clay. Like, don't be afraid to fail because you're going to learn from it. You're going to learn. Some things you are going to fail at. Some things that you buy when you resell are going to be duds and they're not going to sell and that's just all part of the journey. And you have to buy it. You have to make those mistakes when you resell. You have to learn through your mistakes at, at you know, through your mistakes. But don't be afraid of being super successful either because, Everybody deserves that as well. Like if you are one of those people, and I'm not going to say lucky because I don't believe that if you're super successful in reselling, that doesn't come from luck. That comes from hard damn work. So if you are super successful in your reselling, then that's because you have worked your absolute ass off and you deserve that. So embrace that. And um, I just, yeah, you don't be afraid. Don't be don't be f afraid of failure and don't be afraid of success. Take whatever comes your way, you know. Yep. I think it is the work failure that puts so many people off doing things or the word, maybe that's meant to mean. Is that what you mean, the word failure? Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I think it comes back to people are afraid about what other people will think. Are, are, are people afraid of being judged? Are they afraid of what other people will think of them? Um, I think that's, you know, that's that comes back to a lot of failure. It's, it's being more worried about what other people will think. And, you know, we that's, that's something we all have to get over in life. Stop worrying about what other people think. And do you, be you, fail as you, <laughs> be, be as successful as you can and, um, yeah, and here it is the worst thing is what we're afraid of usually turns out to be nothing and it's not a big deal once we try absolutely that is massive isn't it like um 
we can work ourselves up. I mean, that comes with anxiety, doesn't it? Obviously, I have anxiety. So quite often, I'm so afraid of things that turn out to be absolutely nothing. So I am like the queen of anxiety and, um, you know, anxiety sucks and anxiety is a fear. So, yeah, but you're right. As soon as we do it or we try it, we suddenly realise, hey, that wasn't too bad and we go about it and we do it again and we do it again and we can get better. And there you go. If you don't feel successful, then you haven't truly succeeded. Ah, I like that. I like that. Um, Ian's saying he's got a shop full of stuff that he wouldn't buy again. Yeah, I mean, I've got things in my store that I wouldn't buy again, but if I didn't buy them, I wouldn't know, would I? So, you know, you have to learn from those mistakes. I'm getting better. I still doubt myself as a teacher at times, even after 13 years. Running marathons was one thing that helped me build confidence because what I was able to do, I saw in my mind. Yep, and I would suspect that running a marathon will wow for one. <laughs> Hats off to you because I can't run to save myself. Um, but I also think that running would give you a very clear mind and um, I think it would be so good for you mentally to, to – I would love to be able to run for just – like go for a run for an hour or I think it would be such a great way to mentally um, just have that time to think and, and, and work through those thoughts. So, um, yeah, don't. I'm sure you're a wonderful teacher, so don't second-guess yourself. Yep. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Um, we can't give our power away to fear. Success and failure are only measured by others. Truth, hello, bluegrass picker. Um, part of learning from failure is that you can learn to mitigate the down risk. You can't eliminate it as you can't control everything. That's right. You um, Control is a massive thing, isn't it? Because as people, we all like to have control. And um, in reality, none of us have got control. You know, we just have to control our own thoughts and our own feelings and our own mind and um, control what we do ourselves. and, you know, can't control everyone else. You can't control what the, what the world sometimes throws at you, but um, what you, do what you can with what you can control is what I would say. Kelly's saying, I always doubt myself and my intelligence. Seeing my success in building up my reselling business has brought me so much confidence. I'm really kind of proud of myself. That's awesome, Kelly. And, um, yeah, I, it's really, we do doubt ourselves. You know, I, it's it's something that everybody does. It's really easy to doubt yourself. Um, I, I doubt my intelligence all the time because I know that I'm not an um, academic type of person. I learn um, through myself. I'm good at self-teaching myself and I actually feel like I'm quite knowledgeable on things, but I'm sometimes not very good at expressing that or getting it around. Um, I'm not, I'm not very good. I'm not a very good speller. My grammar isn't the best, um, things like that. But I feel like, um, because of those things, I can also doubt myself, even though I know that I am quite knowledgeable on things and I have a a lot that I could share or teach, but I, I'm, I definitely doubt myself in how I could do that or because I don't feel like I'm that ap academic type of person. <laughs> but so I understand that. I totally understand that. But um, I think it is does build your confidence when you um, do well with something and it and it's um, you should be proud if you build a reselling business. You know you've built that from scratch, and you've had to work hard at that. And 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 nobody else has done that except for you. So um, be proud of yourself and cheer yourself on. And um, when you work for yourself like that, you have to cheer yourself on and say, "Go you! I am proud of myself." Um, you are getting your points. Am I? I don't know. I feel like I'm just. <laughs> I've got, ver I feel like I've got a bit of verbal diary going on. Like I've just been talking for an hour and a half by myself. What's going on? Okay. Hey, Nick. How are you going? <laughs> I presume that's just Nick, not Nick and Andrea, but hello. Um, wow, did I even get to 20? Okay, where are I? Oh, look at this sunlight again. Ooh, it's so lovely. It's so flattering on my skin. <laughs> my wrinkles okay 
Number 20, it says interact. <laughs> okay, the, the 20th thing on this list on ways to make progress is to interact. So, yeah, interact with others, interact with people who surround you, interact with your online community, interact with your family and friends, interact with business connections, interact with don't just close yourself off and um, be afraid to interact. I think a lot of people, especially those introverts, they get afraid to interact with people or, um, yeah, and I don't know, like if you interact... The more I interact with people, the more I get to know them, the more people I have met, um, the more friends I'm making in this community. Don't be afraid to interact. Um, don't be, don't be, if you are one of these people that lurks in chats all the time and you've never popped in and, and chatted in the chat, then come in and say hi. Start joining in your community, meeting people. Um, it's so fun to interact. Even me interacting here with you, like, it's, it's one, it's good for my confidence. Um, it's, it's gets, I'm talking to 50 people here or whatever and having a conversation. And also you guys get to interact with each other in the chat. So interaction is huge. And, um, yeah, I just think do it. Interact. Interact is a massive thing of making progress. PVP, as long as you're curious about things you can learn, you don't need a formal education, setting to learn, formal education can also be great. Yeah, I absolutely agree. When I was a photographer, I learned how to do photography via YouTube um, and I was a good photographer. Um, but I used to get people message me all the time, can you teach me photography? You know, people who liked my specific style and they wanted to learn in the same way as me and they can you teach? Can you teach? And there was no way that I could teach photography because I, I did not learn photography in a technical manner. I learnt going, I learnt to photograph how I wanted to photograph. Do you know what I mean? I self-taught me the way that I wanted to photograph. And I like still to this day, that camera, I've got top equipment. I would not know the half of what that camera does. <laughs> Just to put it bluntly, because I didn't teach myself about all the stuff on that camera. I taught myself how to shoot a specific way, and um, and and that's how I taught myself. So I, I would, if you sent me to photography school at uni or TAFE or whatever, there's no way I could have learned. Sat there, I would have gone in one ear and out the other because I don't learn in that in that way. I would just all that mumbo jumbo technical stuff would have been out the door. I cannot learn in that way. And um, yeah, so I totally agree. You don't need a formal education. You have to learn to self-teach yourself in a way that you understand. Yeah. Um, I am very articulate. Oh, I don't think anyone's ever said that. So thank you. <laughs> um Gimbal is saying my anxiety and depression is the best it's ever been since into my 40s yeah so I think that's that's awesome if that's the case um I'm not sure I can say the same <laughs> my my anxiety is better because I'm medicated um <laughs> quite frankly um I did try and go off those meds earlier in the year which is partly why I took some time off in February because it just didn't work very well for me and um I was, it, I just didn't cope very well. <laughs> um, and I went into that slump again. But I, yeah, I definitely think once you hit your 40s, you are much more self aware and comfortable in your own skin. And, um, you know, I'm almost 44. And every single year, I feel like I do get more comfortable and content with who I am. And, what I'm doing and what my why is and et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, and that's awesome. If you've got your depression and your anxiety under control, that is awesome. Ken, what are you saying here? I can't believe how much I can talk until I did a five-hour listing. It all comes down to the people in the chat. You guys have been amazing today, like, talking me through this, and um, I really, really appreciate you guys in the chat today. So um, it's been awesome. 
And Nick is saying, life has been my education and failing has taught me the most of what I know. Yes, Nick. I really feel like Nick and I are quite similar in a lot of um, a lot of ways, and especially after talking to him the other week. Like I, I think you and I think very similar, simil, simil, similar, similar, <laughs> similar. See, they're terrible. Um, life is your education. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. There's so much life mistakes that we make there's um oh, we just learn through everything don't we we learn through our mistakes we learn through our failures and um we become better people because of them and um yeah i'm with you nick life and self-education is the awesome aussie thrifter is the same there you go um ian is saying he's always the quiet one in the chat true story and Ian, we've been talking about this a little bit lately because Ian is quite shy and I think he needs to come out of his shell a little bit more. I think Ian is quite hard on himself. Just to put you out there on the spot there, Ian. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you are an awesome guy and you um, definitely need to share more of yourself with everyone else so that everyone else can um, see that. Yeah, similar, similar, same, same. You learned your way to get things done, not the formal way. It's like when I played drums, I was self-taught. My technique was probably awful, but still the old recordings I have are fun. Yep, absolutely. Like you, oh, this, my son is self-teaching himself how to play the guitar at the moment. I absolutely love it. I love walking past that room and listening to the sound of that guitar and I wish with all my might that I could, here comes the sun, I wish with all my might that I could learn to play the guitar, but I truly don't believe that I can <laughs> because my I don't have the coordination with my fingers <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that I wouldn't be able to do this with my left hand while I'm strumming as well as thinking. I'd, I don't, I'd love to do it. I just don't think I could do it, but I love that my son is able to do it. I think Nick should be a future guest. Nick has been a future guest. <laughs> you must have missed that, Ian. Nick's already been on my channel. We did a whole big live. Um, Joanna, sometimes throwing yourself in the deep end, you learn quickly, just like you, Mel, with the chat. You are doing awesome with the chat. Am I getting better with the chat? Like I've, I've tried today, but maybe it's because I'm not distracted talking um, with Bron, because normally, like, if I'm listening to Bron chat, I really want to give her my full attention. So then I feel like I'm distracted if I'm reading the chat, but I'm trying to concentrate on Bron or whoever it is that's that's speaking with me at the time. So yeah, that can be that can be hard. Um, okay, do you want me to keep going? I've done twenty. Well, I'll go quicker maybe with these next ones. <laughs> okay. Um, Number 21 on the list of ways to make progress was to learn skills. So, yeah, and learn new skills, I guess. we. Um, the more skills you have, the more um, things will become easier, won't they? Business will become easier. Life will become easier. We've, we can have business skills. We can have life skills. Um, learning a new skill I don't know. It's just learning a new skill is not only exciting, um, it brings new energy. Um, it just opens up a whole new world of things. So um, I can't, this light, I'm going from like dark to like fully exposed. I just can't get it. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think about learning, um, learning new skills? Like... At the moment, I'm trying to learn YouTube. So I'm actually spending a lot of my time listening to um, videos and chats and um, oh, I guess people who specialise in that kind of stuff. Like I'm trying to learn that now online. How do I get better at this YouTube? How do I, how do I, I've got to teach myself that. I've, I'm, I've come into YouTube, like when I opened up this YouTube account, I didn't even... Like I used to watch YouTube and I didn't even have a name. Like I was coming in as a guest watching people's lives because I couldn't even reply in the chat. So, you know, nine months ago, 
except for watching some YouTube videos on photography, I'd never really done anything with YouTube. So now I have to come in and learn, um, you know, all the behind the scenes stuff to YouTube where there's so much of it. Um, but also um, I have to learn how to make videos. I have to learn how to edit a video. I have to learn how to come on here and speak for an hour by myself <laughs> about nothing. <laughs> I have to learn how to talk to other people that I want to bring onto the chats and um, talk to, you know, like I really enjoy talking to other people on these lives and, and talking about a different topic and um, I find that really interesting getting to know people like that and um, I definitely like that's that's all quite like, you know, I, I, I don't really like interviewing <laughs> but I really like to chat and just have that discussion and talk with someone and learn about other people or learn um, about a topic with somebody else and yeah I just I really enjoy meeting those new people and bringing new people into the into the chat and talking about that but that's all something that that's a skill I've, I've never done that before I've never been a um, somebody who talks in front of people like um, I've never been somebody who talks in front of a large crowd I've, I've never been good at social things like that and um, I've certainly never interviewed anyone so to, so to have to, so to bring somebody onto your own channel and talk find co find conversation to talk about them with is actually challenging and it's a new skill that I'm learning all the time and hopefully getting better at and um, yeah it's hard so Anyway, I'm all for um, I'm all for learning um, new skills. I held myself back. Anxiety can be crippling. Yes, yes to new skills. It's fun but scary. I'm like you, trying to learn to resell in YouTube. Going to work on some editing, some videos, and do my own live shoe and work on stuff. Do you know what? When you first start YouTube, really nobody is watching <laughs> and sometimes that's that's actually a good way to learn because not a, it's it's actually scary when you put yourself out there so um if you can actually learn to do it and become confident as you go i actually think that's a good thing start with that smaller crowd and as your crowd grows your confidence will have grown with it and you will you will build with it so yeah so um there yeah. Um, the biggest life lesson I have learned in the power of saying yes is doing stuff despite fear, despite ability and despite someone else's best advice. Oh, so true, Nick. So true. Yep. Sometimes you just got to say yes, don't you? Even if you're not comfortable, put yourself out there and um, just yeah, make shit happen. That's oh, it's such so important. You've got you've just jump jump in just learn it jump in try and um yeah definitely like you say jump in say yes um um wow okay next thing let's get through this list so i can <laughs> hop off um the next thing is to invest okay so invest is another great way to make progress okay so invest um and when I think about investing, I'm not so much thinking investing shares or something like that. Invest in yourself. Invest in what you learn. Invest in um, um, new skills. Invest in um, other people. Like invest, just that word, doesn't it? It just means so much. Invest. What what can you invest in? Um, um, yes, we also want to invest in stuff, shares, housing, all that you know, that kind of stuff. I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not really, I don't think of that when I'm bringing into this conversation. I'm more thinking of invest, invest in, invest in yourself. You know, like um, y you're worth it. You're worth investing um, time into your. It's worth investing learning a new skill. It's worth investing. Um, getting to know somebody else and making making that new friendship and making a new bond like all those things it's it's just so worth it in the, in the in the way in the end 
There you go. Jazz, what did you say? I said yes to a public reading last night despite fear. It was horrible and I did it, but never again. <laughs> but you did it, Jazz, and it probably wasn't as bad as you actually thought it was going to do. So, um, yeah, I definitely um, the more you do things, the easier it begins. <laughs> I'm waiting for the T-shirt. <laughs> there you go make shit happen it's always been my motto I've always kind of said it like um and people have often said that to me like over the years because I've been one of these people that once I get an idea in my head I really do make that happen like if I want to try a new business I make it happen I just I've always had that mentality behind me um make it happen like I truly I truly have like I've never had any once I've got, once I get an idea in my head, you can't stop me. If I want to learn something, I will, I will make it happen. You, you like, you will learn that about me. I definitely, that is definitely a motto that I, I stand behind. Um, I have a few friends that watch the live show I do with a friend on his channel. We've only done eight episodes. It gets easier and more fun each week, and we don't care who watches. We just want to help people. Absolutely, and you get more confident. Like, ah. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to lie. I still get super nervous here before all my lives. <laughs> I sit, sometimes I physically make my body sick, um, but um, yeah, it, it does get easier. It gets easier, and this this live has probably been good for me because this is the longest I've ever spoken on my own, and um, it's really like I've had verbal diarrhea. I haven't stopped talking. I'm going to lose my voice after all this. <laughs> Aussie Thrifter, I think that's why we're all here, to invest in making new friends and contact with people on the same journey. Absolutely, we're, especially in a lonely job like this. When you're self-employed um, and you're doing reselling, it can be lonely. You don't have other people that you work with. You don't have colleagues. Um, so it is really important to connect with people who are doing the who who understand like we all understand even if we're in different countries and our brands might be different and our postage and shipping might be different at the end of the day we are all here doing the same business trying to make a living doing the same thing and um we all understand each other's um difficulties and we're all and we're all here for each other's wins and we all want to see each other succeed and it's it's amazing it's yeah absolutely amazing um where are we <laughs> i have an investment recommendation for you at dymo <laughs> it's coming it's coming Ken. It is coming. I will get the Dymo. I just have to, um, <laughs> I, you know, that that is a big thing. But investing in quality equipment will speed things up for you and um, make you more productive. So um, I was listening to a chat the other day and I, I can't remember where it was, but um, um, they were talking about investing in like software and the computer and stuff and how, you know, like somebody was saying the reason why they buy like the top quality mobile phone is because it makes their life so much easier you know they um the, the 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 things that that phone offers you can speed up so many other things so yeah investing over into quality um equipment with your business you know like um even for me when i first started this i bought like a cheap rubbish microphone that just didn't even work so then I invested in a better micro microphone, but really I should have just invested in the good one straight away. So, um, yeah, investing in quality stuff so that um, it lasts and it makes your life easier and it makes your business flow and um, your workflow easier. Definitely, 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 definitely. And I will invest in the Dymo because <laughs> I do know I need that. Invest in your own future. Put things in place today. Start something that can grow from tiny seeds. Yep. Nick is full of all the knowledge bombs, isn't he? Love talking to Nick. Um, get a zebra. That's like a – okay, Drew, I'll talk to you about the different kinds of um, thing before I do buy one. Um, okay, where are we? <laughs> I talk to myself. I'm self-employed. I'm technically 
having a staff meeting. <laughs> now, I, I, yeah, sometimes we do talk to ourselves. Sometimes I talk to myself. I'll be running through ideas and I'll notice that I'm speaking them out loud and then I think, what a, that's mad. <laughs> Run through it. <laughs> okay, the next thing on this list says to journal. And um, I'm not a massive journaler. I would like to do it more. Um, I do think it is very therapeutic and um, I definitely think it helps to get ideas out. I'm more of a top, I'm quite an open book. So um, if you message me, you quite often get a very blunt, um, <laughs> no filter conversation <laughs> because I like to talk things out. So um, journaling for me, it's just, it would be a similar thing I guess I like to talk it out with somebody else um, rather than journal but I still do write things down and I still do make constantly mental notes and stuff so yeah I don't know if anyone here is a is a journaler but um, I have heard that it can change people's lives once they once they start journaling on a on a regular basis but um, yeah Jazz might be a bit of a journaler because she likes to write so I don't know. I don't, I'm not really. I'm not, I, I, I don't think I could journal online and type it and writing it. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I definitely. I think I prefer to talk it out. But I, I guess that's still in a way. I'm still talking about my feelings. You've just got to make sure you choose somebody trustworthy to tell um, that stuff to. And then. <laughs> There you go. I talk to myself all the time and then keep thinking, why don't I just, just do it? Just do a video. Look at me. I'm talking talking to myself <laughs> for nearly two hours. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> um, I talk to myself. Why am I not the smartest person? <laughs> um, yeah. There you go. Fairy Wren. I do a lot of journal journaling, affirmations and poetry too. Yeah, my sister writes poetry. She's actually just um, been signed a book deal recently. So her she's in the middle of making the cover and stuff for her poetry book. But she gets a lot of um, relief from writing poetry and stuff. So, yeah, I think that would be, um, be awesome to be able to do that, uh, to, to get your feelings out in the way of, oh, I wish I could write a song, you know, like song lyrics or something. Oh, I just... I would love to put my feelings into a song. I just have to look for other songs that have already got the same feelings. <laughs> um, um, Adi, would you go on a mail live? There you go. Question, you've been hit up. <laughs> um, we can just talk about random stuff, you know, like, like this. <laughs> Z Gilbert, hello. And, um, yes, I talk to myself too, my um where are we okay so journaling the next thing we have on here is meditating okay does anyone here meditate um i am not very good at meditating and i know that it's something i need to learn more about but i have really difficult time and this probably proves why i should meditate more i have a really difficult time bringing those um thoughts down to nothing I guess and just I guess just finding quality time where I'm by myself is also tricky in a big household um but oh, the last week I've been having a bath nearly every single night like a two-hour bath until the bath goes cold I'm pretty much bathing and um I've just got the music on the candles on and I've never felt so much more relaxed and the one night this week where I didn't have the bath I actually had the worst night's sleep ever. So I think I'm just going to have to have a couple hours in the bath every night. And maybe that's my form of meditation. Um, I do have one of those acupuncture mats, which is awesome. And they hurt, but they are awesome. And because they are painful, you really do have to kind of tune yourself out. So I normally put the um, headphones on so I can block everything out. And I put on some... Um, normally put on like some kind of relaxing type of music, whether or not it's some acoustic covers or some raindrops or, you know, rainforest sounds or something like that. So um, if I can lie on that acupuncture, acupuncture mat for about half an hour, I because I'm kind of, you ha takes you a while to tune out into that pain, um, 
I do find that that is very helpful to me, um, meditating. But I think with someone like me with anxiety and um, I need I need to learn. I'd actually like to do a course or something. I, I think I need to go and learn from some meditation guru how to do it properly. <laughs> Maybe that's something I'll sign up to in the near future. <laughs> um there you go a long bath and candles is bliss oh it's so i've you know i've never really had many baths until this last week i don't even know what I, why i went in it the other week i was really um knotted up in my shoulder i was sore and i was like okay i've got some magnesium in there i'll go and have a bath and um yeah it really made such a huge difference and my sleep has just been so much better so definitely i think just relaxing your body and relaxing your mind definitely helps them with your sleep and being more productive then in, in your days. There you go. I focus on counting my breaths, nothing else, just in and out, in and out. Yep. Um, can we see your puppy? <laughs> hey, where are you looking? This is Poppy. Hey. <laughs> she's really old she's about 12 now so she's um she's getting old she's a bit she's got she's got more anxiety than me <laughs> so there you go um where we are i love music some songwriters have written dozens and hundreds of great songs i think if we could even write one like that oh wouldn't it be amazing i think it's such a skill to be able to write poetry or write a song or anything like that aussie thrifter i can't stop my brain from going so i can't meditate it's really hard i think it's a real big skill that needs to be learned i am not great with it either and um but when you can, it makes a difference. And I, even in the brain, even brain, even in the bath, I don't think my brain totally stops. You know, I've, I've sit there and message people while I'm in the bath, or I'm scrolling Instagram or um, Facebook or whatever. But I'm, my body is relaxed, and that I, that in itself um, is massive, massive, massive. Is that Poppy the Pommy? <laughs> She's not. Yes, po yeah, she is. Okay, I get it now. She's a pomerant. See, it took me a second to click to that. I'm not very good with jokes. It's Poppy. Yeah, Poppy the Pomeranium, the old Pomeranium. Okay, the next thing on this list I'm getting there is get a mentor. Okay. Um, yes, I think getting a mentor is great, especially if you can afford it. Not everyone can afford a mentor. So I think another way to have a mentor is maybe an accountability partner um there is somebody that i would love to do a mentoring course with um about youtube whether or not i can i haven't looked into how much it costs or anything yet um but it is something that i would like to explore because i definitely think if there's something that you really want to learn then then get yourself a mentor but um also be totally aware with information that there's so much free information out there that you don't always have to pay to have a mentor so um i would more suggest maybe rather than mentor especially in a lot of our stages maybe accountability partner is a is maybe a better word for that get yourself accountability partner somebody who who motivates you and can cheer you on and um you know um bust your balls when you need it that's what you need you need somebody who like uh, and that's kind of what a mentor does isn't it they bust your balls when you need it and sometimes you need some tough love and you need somebody pushing you and you need somebody to whip your butt into gear um when you're in a slump so that's my thoughts on that the next thing is to think big oh this is yeah think big Go big or go home. <laughs> That's what I reckon. Go hard or go home. Think big, think big. Um, definitely think big. Um, you know, there's no point thinking small, is there? I mean, you, you think, the bigger you think, the more you will push yourself, I think. Um, you know, it, you'll be more successful if you think bigger. And, um, you know, we're all capable of more and we all need to push ourselves for more, I think, you know, and the, the bigger you think, 
I agree. The more progress you will make with stuff, um, the bigger your goals are, the harder you're gonna, the harder you're gonna work, the harder you're gonna um, try to get. As long as they're attainable, you know, the harder you're gonna push yourself to get there. There you go, Nick and Andrea. I've never had a mentor; just done my own thing. I'm terrible at asking for help with anything. Um, I think it's a, it is hard to ask for help, but I think it's so important, isn't it? Like asking for help is. Um, Oh, I don't know. Asking for help is like it's it's scary to ask for help, but it can make so much of a difference. So, um, yeah, I don't, I've never had a mentor as such. If I, if I was going to say anyone was my mentor, I'd say it was my brother just because he is um, so, oh, he's, my brother's just so awesome in the way he thinks about things. He's had a lot of therapy over the years. He studies, he's studying a um, psychology, not psychology, but a, um, I can't even think of the word, but um, psychomosis or something really difficult. So he's just really good at reading people in the brain and he's very business minded. He's had a lot of business. My brother has, he's like me, he's very um, um business savvy he's always done his own businesses as well my brother owns his own real estate agency my brother opened up a porto chicken restaurants here um he has is very very smart i should bring my brother on here one day for a chat i think everyone would learn a lot from my brother he's got a very business savvy mind um and i think he's probably the biggest mentor that i've had um in my life would be my brother yep <laughs> if anyone needs a where if anyone needs a boot up the bum message me I'm very bossy <laughs> I think we all need that kind of accountability partner sometimes yeah um the only thing I find relaxing is playing sports if you find that relaxing um you know do more of it that's what I would say do more of it and um I know it's hard at the moment but yeah Nick is a night owl Krillin. He likes to stay up to about 3 a.m. <laughs> There's a couple of UK people in here, so they're all doing really, really well. Not psychosis. Um, oh, I'll have to, I'll have to look it up. I'll DM you the actual word Krillin. I can't think. It's um, psychotherapy. Psychotherapy. Um, I don't know. It's a little bit where they dig a bit deeper than just general psychology, but um, I can't think. A psychotherapy, something like that something something technical but yeah he's studying that at the mother at the moment and yeah yeah I think he would be if I could get him his time issue would be for him um yeah I think I'll, I'll try one day um the next thing on this list was be productive be productive is a great way to make progress I've only got a few more things guys and then I'm nearly done I think there's three more things on this list um be productive um definitely be be productive in everything that you do and that will make a progress in your life. And I know it's hard to be productive and procrastinating is a massive thing that kills productivity, um, but productivity goes back into setting yourself systems, boundaries, um, your to-do lists, um, setting your goals, planning your day out, all that kind of stuff. Um that's all the important stuff for being productive. So, and and one thing about being productive is don't be too hard on yourself sometimes if you're not productive. We can't be productive 100% all the time. So just don't be too hard on yourself if you're not always productive, if that makes sense. But definitely be productive. That's going to that's going to help you. And do more. Um do more. Um, do more is a way to wait. Okay, <laughs> do more way to make is a way to make progress in life. Yes, I think we can all do more. I think we all procrastinate different times of our day. There's parts of our day where we're not doing enough. We're not we're lazy, <laughs> basically. Um, but yeah, if you do more, you're obviously going to reap benefits from it. So um, sometimes it's nice to do less, but and sometimes our bodies need us to do less. So. Um, doing more isn't always right at certain times in our life, but um, doing more is a great way to make progress. D 
just do that extra even if it's five minutes you're trying to learn something new just spend five minutes on learning that that thing or yeah there you go sometimes i need to allow myself to not be productive yeah definitely definitely jazz it's very hard sometimes to stop and do nothing especially in a business like this i i really struggle to just sit down and watch an hour and a half movie like like i'm like i feel like i should be doing something and um that that is hard and yeah it, we do have to learn to sometimes just um that's why i like watching married at first sight because for an hour i do nothing <laughs> maybe because it's just trash but when it's a movie i sometimes that hour and a half it's just maybe that little bit long and i i definitely struggle so yeah i'm revising and listing to mail yep see you're being productive you're doing something while you're doing something else so yep that's awesome that's what you want with these kind of chats isn't it sit down um i do it all the time when i'm listening to a live chat i've normally got headphones on and i'm working or i'm photographing or i'm doing something but i'm listening to the chat and i i love that i love to listen to things and stuff so I could talk for an hour about procrastination, but I'll have to have a cup of tea first to tidy the office and take a bath. <laughs> oh, God, isn't that the story of our life? That is such a story. <laughs> Dwayne's saying tidy the office. Um, how funny. Um, number 29, two more, is spend wisely. Um making progress spend wisely and you know i think we can often spend too much um so yeah and that come that comes back to with stock to spend on think wisely about what you're buying um spend wisely on what you're buying spend wisely on um equipment so that you're not wasting money and have to buy things um twice you know like like me with the microphone paid for a rubbish one and then had to go and buy a more expensive one um so yeah spend your money wisely because it is hard earned money and um yeah definitely um that's a big thing isn't it on on way if you spend your money wisely it's going to affect all you're going to have more cash flow for when opportunities come up with business or bulk lots might come up um yeah there's there's so so much there with money and like i said before i'm not great with money and i don't love to talk about money but i definitely think that that is a very wise thing to to spend money um <laughs> oh <laughs> you're kidding me are you <laughs> <He's trying. laughs> okay I'm glad you're still here because I'm nearly done. So just hang off on, in bed there for a little bit. <laughs> um, getting a lot. Hey, Sam, she's walking in the sunshine. There's no one's around. Ghost town. Getting a lot done at work, though, because it's quiet. It's good to see you pop in. Number 30. Okay, the last thing on this to-do list, this never-ending to-do list that took me two hours to get through is to be ambitious and um yeah i think i'm a pretty ambitious person i've got lots of goals i'm pretty driven um i'm motivated i like to see results i like to learn new things so i would describe myself i guess as quite an ambitious person um yeah i don't know what do you what, what, have you, <laughs> what, what do you guys think like um about that to be ambitious 30 ways to make progress last one is be ambitious i think if you're not ambitious then you're just not driven enough and when you're self-employed you have to be self-driven um you have to be ambitious to want to make it work um i don't know like it's tough it's like this kind of stuff is tough to talk about on your own <laughs> but um yeah i think being ambitious is a very very important part of growing and progressing in your in your business so there you go i'm going to read through those 30 things that we just spoke about <laughs> and then i'm going to put this list on instagram so um if you want to share it on instagram or um screenshot it or pin it or whatever you want to do i think it's um a worthy worthy cause so 
30 ways again to make progress that we've just spent two hours talking about. One, wake up early. Two, read daily. Three, eat well. Four, love yourself. Five, judge less. Six, be yourself. Seven, set goals. Eight, plan your day. Nine, have a positive attitude. Ten, have a purpose. Eleven, find inspiration. Twelve, help others. Thirteen, network. Fourteen, save money. Fifteen, automate. Sixteen, delegate. Seventeen, track your finances. Eighteen, build a brand. Nineteen, fail fast. Twenty, interact. Twenty-one, learn new skills. Twenty-two, invest. Twenty-three, journal. Twenty-four, meditate. Twenty-five, get a mentor or we'll say accountability partner. <laughs> Twenty-six, think big. Twenty-seven, be productive. Twenty-eight, do more. Twenty-nine, spend wisely. And thirty, be ambitious. There we go. <laughs> Never for a second did I think it would take me two hours to get through all of those things <laughs> when I picked that topic. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, Jazz has just put my Instagram up. Thank you, Jazz. That's awesome. Yep, I will put that up. So good list there. Yep, thank you. Um, Nick is saying he struggles to be less ambitious. His mission is to work less and enjoy the position we are in, and it's not easy because you're. I know Nick is a bit of a workaholic, and um, I think that is also a mission in my life, Nick. I just don't feel like I'm quite there yet. I've still got some hard yard years ahead of me um, before I feel like I can actually work less. But I, um, I do love that this job I can take time off and work less when I when I need to like the last couple of months I have needed to um but yeah I definitely think if you are in a position to be able to work less and be able to be a little bit less ambitious then do it do it do it do it yeah Thank you so much um, and thank you everyone for saying that was a good chat. <laughs> thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> really, really appreciate it. So before I sign off, I just want to tell you all that tomorrow I do have a live chat scheduled um, in the morning again and tomorrow I'll be talking to Kevin from the Thrifting Lounge. I don't know if you know Kevin. Um but he has some great energy and I'm really looking forward to talking to him. Kevin was on YouTube some years ago and he actually um, went through a period of burnout himself and he had to step away from YouTube. And so he's just the last few months, he's coming back to YouTube and trying to build that up again now. So um, I think Kevin and I will have um, – some stuff to talk about in, re in regards to burnout and, um, you know, I'd love to hear more about his story with that and, you know, his um, positive um, goals now to get himself back into the swing of things. So, um, Krillin, I think that is um, my 9 a.m. here, which I think might be about America's 6 p.m. because I think yeah, Kevin had said 6 p.m. for him. So on my channel down here, it's 9.30 in the morning, 9 o'clock in the morning. But there is, it is scheduled, so you can go in there and hit the little reminder and it'll tell you what time it is for your um, time zone. So, yeah, that would be great to see you all in the chat tomorrow with, with Kevin. So, yeah, I'm going to sign off for now. Thank you all so much. I need a drink. I feel like I'm going to lose my voice, like I need, like, to... Um, barley sugar or something <laughs> but um thanks guys so much i really appreciate it and i hope you all have a great day see you next tuesday